So, periodically, my Twitter feed explodes. This time, because Elon Musk is just about to unveil the Hyperloop on the 10th of December, 2018. Proving, of course, that I was completely wrong about this. Welcome back. Elon Musk out with new details about his high-speed Hyperloop transport. Lauren Simonetti mm -hmm. with all the details now. Lauren, good morning. Good morning. We have a date and we have a place. How about something like this for a high-speed transportation system under Los Angeles County? On Twitter, Elon Musk replied to a person who tweeted that video, pretty close actually to what he is planning under LA. Musk has touted his high-speed Hyperloop underground vision for a few years now. Large pods like this, speeding through tunnels from Long Beach to LAX. You know, I'm constantly amazed by the mainstream media's ability to confuse the Hyperloop, which is basically a train that runs in a vacuum, basically space. It's a vacuum train, a concept that has been around for over a hundred years. The only thing that Elon Musk has done to it is give it a new name. Now, the downside of this, of course, is all this is, you know, 100 year old idea is that no one in that last 100 years has found a way of making these huge vacuum tubes that you would need to make these things work. So the media has confused that with another brilliant idea of Elon Musk. Yes, Elon Musk, inventor of the subway. To try out Elon Musk's high-speed underground transit loop may get their chance soon. Musk said on Twitter yesterday that the first test tunnel concept is, quote, almost done and that it will open December 10th. He added that free rides in the tunnel at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne will be offered to the public the next day. Now at 10, traveling by tunnel. Could this be the cure to L.A.'s traffic ills? Elon Musk has big dreams of changing the way we commute. And now that dream's a step closer to reality. Musk's first underground tunnel is getting ready for its big debut. In L.A. and Chicago, Musk plans to use electric pods to carry 16 people at a time at up to 155 miles per hour. Now you might think, hang on, I'm pretty sure that the London Underground was opened over 100 years ago and Elon Musk's subway hasn't even transported anyone yet. So how can he have invented this revolutionary new mode of transport? Yeah. Musk is just about to unveil his metro, an amazing two mile long tunnel. It took him about a year to dig, so that's not that different from the sort of digging times that you have on other metros where you would take, you know, sort of five, 10 years, that sort of thing, to dig a 20 mile system. But he claims he's gonna be running things at 150 miles an hour in it. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna to have to call bullshit on that too. Why? Well, the first one's quite simple. The laws of physics. Metros are not race cars. People stand in them, meaning that the acceleration is limited to what people can comfortably stand up at. Most metros accelerate at about one meter per second squared, meaning it would take almost 60 seconds to reach the top speed that Elon Musk is claiming. By which time, of course, in his tunnel, it would be time to slow down again. So your average speed would only be about half of that, about 75 miles per hour. Look, I mean, look, his metro's got a big bend in it. You're not gonna have any big bends in metros going at 150 miles per hour. I mean, just imagine being in a sports car doing 150 miles an hour and doing a sharp turn. Now imagine doing that in a bus full of people. Sorry, a, me a metro full of people. Further, on top of that, most metros are two parallel tubes, one outbound, one inbound. Not Elon Musk's metro. This is just gonna go up and down a two mile tunnel. And just in case we got any fanboys out there who say, yeah, but this is the genius who revolutionized rocketry by inventing vertical takeoff and landing rockets that were rapidly reusable. Uh, sorry, but all of that was done 20 years ago too. Then of course, there's the issue of the air. You see, metros run in tunnels, not in the open air. So whenever you move a train down these things, the air tends to pile up in front, providing more resistance. And on top of that, it just takes more energy to accelerate the metro to the speed, and then you've got to decelerate it again. The faster you go, the more expensive and inefficient the whole thing comes to run. 
Look, these problems have been looked at by thousands of engineers around the world, and they've all converged on the same design, which is why basically all metro systems around the world look the same. But folks are claiming that Musk has dug these tunnels at one hundredth of the price that other people dug their tunnels at. Uh, well, I'm not so sure about that. You know, that's the cost of a working metro. All Musk has done is dig some tunnels, and the tunnels that he's dug are a comparable cost to other tunnel digging projects. So this is just some stats I found. Someone digs about a five kilometer tunnel at about four meters in diameter, and it costs them about mm, seven million dollars. That's not far off the numbers for Elon Musk's tunnel. Not really that surprising, seeing as all Elon Musk did here was buy an off-the-shelf tunneling machine. He did nothing new here. Now all he's got to do is install the rest of the metro, you know, like the rail lines, the electrics, the ventilation. Serious, the followers said, is this going to be like a really cool disco-like experience? Yeah. And he said, yep. Awesome. So there's going to be something cool happening in those tunnels. It's kind of scary if you ask so me. So what exactly are you trying out if the tunnels aren't yet built? And of course, some stations, none of which you're going to get massive savings on because constructing metros is 100 year old technology. The only real difference here is Musk's proposed metro leaves giant holes in the middle of the street for people to fall in. Plus, of course, it has smaller carriages which reduce the efficiency of boarding and getting off the train and give more air resistance per number of people carried. I mean, you just have to look at the chasm between the hype. I think this is going to be something that's way better than um, any, any transport system anywhere else in the world. And what's actually there. It's a tunnel that takes people from Hawthorne to downtown Los Angeles. Elon Musk's boring company will unveil the test tunnel in just a few weeks. The SpaceX boss tweeted, the first tunnel is almost done, opens December 10th. So here you'll notice that the skate's almost twice as wide as the car. Meanwhile, in reality, you couldn't even take an SUV in this thing. According to the boring company, it's a loop system whisking people through the system's tunnels at up to 150 miles per hour. They travel on an electric powered platform called a skate. The skate can carry a car that's been driven onto it or a vehicle itself carrying between eight and 16 passengers. Meanwhile, in reality, it looks like this car is just driving down the tunnel. You can see the wheels rotating. <laughs> so much for the skate. But like I say, the really depressing thing here is just how little effort journalists put in to actually distinguishing this from, say, for instance, the Hyperloop. Welcome back. Elon Musk out with new details about his high-speed Hyperloop transport. Lauren Simonetti mm -hmm. with all the details now. Lauren, good morning. Good morning. We have a date and we have a place. I mean, just so you know, recently I was contacted by a journalist from Wired who said they wanted some critical comments about the Hyperloop, so I, I gave them to her. So this is what I told her. Fundamentally, as travel gets faster, air resistance becomes more important. This is why planes fly all the way up in the sky to get away from the air resistance. People have known this for over a hundred years. The Hyperloop, or the vacuum train, as it's been known for the last hundred or so years, is not a new idea. It's no more valid now than it was a hundred years ago. The core reason being that building a hundred or so mile vacuum chamber or near vacuum chamber is almost impossible. The two core problems being the expansion issues on a straight tube and atmospheric pressure. The expansion issues on a long straight tube are a nightmare. Expansion issues are hard enough to deal with on bridges and they don't even hold a vacuum. Pipelines typically get around the issue of expansion by putting expansion kinks in the pipeline. This is not possible if you want to travel through the tube at the speed of sound. For a thousand or so kilometer hyperloop, the tube length will vary by a few football fields in length between a hot and cold day. Atmospheric pressure is about 10 tons per meter squared, so a typical human has about 2 meters squared of skin. However, you don't notice that because the pressure is the same on the inside and the outside. But if you've got 10 tons per meter squared pushing on the outside of the Hyperloop and nothing pushing on the inside, you know, because it's a vacuum, there's a risk of a vacuum collapse, essentially the tube being crushed by the atmosphere. 
humans don't suffer vacuum lightly. In the event of a decompression event, there will be no oxygen masks that can keep you alive. The Hyperloop takes all hazards of being in space and brings them down to a few centimeters of the Earth's surface. The largest collision hazard for any travel is the ground. It's true for cars and for planes. The nice thing about planes is they're typically miles away from the ground. The Hyperloop brings all the hazards of the speed of planes and combines them with the hazard of traveling within a few centimeters of the Earth. Any Hyperloop accident will result in the instant death of everyone in the capsule and almost everyone in the entire Hyperloop with the explosive decompression. Any such incident would put the entire system out of commission for months. So I sent that off to her and didn't really think about it too much after that until I got a worried message from her a few days later saying that she was worried that she might have confused the uh, Hyperloop with just this tunnel that Elon Musk was digging. So I actually took a look at the article and oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. He first began to push the Hyperloop concept in 2012, although the idea goes back more than a century. In 2016, annoyed with the Los Angeles traffic jams, he launched a boring company to dig tunnels under the city to build The Loop, a version of the Hyperloop but without vacuum. You mean a metro? He's building a, he's building a metro. I mean, you just look how the paragraph starts. Hyperloop, the much hyped, uber fast and futuristic vacuum tube transportation system may be inching closer to reality, or at least it's a slower and vacuumless sister project loop might be. You know, I just pull my hair out of this sort of thing. You know, I'm just waiting for someone to come up and say, you know, Elon Musk's invented this brilliant new transport system. Uh, it's like the Hyperloop, but even better, because you don't have to worry about all that vacuum tunnel stuff. Now, you might think that's a metro, but it's even better. Elon Musk's idea is even better. You see, he doesn't even need the tunnel. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's, that sounds kind of like a train, but... That's where Elon Musk shows his true visionary genius. You see, these transport pods don't even need rails. Users can control these pods by little, little wheels. He calls them hyperpods. I mean, it's truly an honor to live in such times with this visionary genius who comes up with all of these ideas uh, that no one's ever thought of before.